Hi guys, I'm here with Santo from Paper Cranes, who have become one of Australia's leading video production houses. They specialise in weddings, but also capture a range of personal stories. And Santo and his team consistently capture the essence of the subjects and their relationships. So, welcome to Road HQ, Santo. Thanks, Cleland. First and foremost, you guys specialise in the wedding cinematography market, correct? Yes, correct. What's your creative background? Sort of, where, what sort of background do you come from? Most of us, we come from filmmaking background. Mm. So, Barry, he, he's the one who started doing films back in the early days, and then I joined in, yeah. and then everything just uh, came from there. And how long have you guys been doing this for? Uh, now it's our sixth year. Mm. And do you feel that there is a rise in the market as far as wedding videos are concerned? It's definitely growing. Yeah. Uh, when we first joined the wedding market, it was like at the start of the growing season. It peaked around like two years ago where all the DSLR cameras were coming in mm. and now we're seeing a lot more people start to come in and with more uh, cameras and more technologies start to come in and more style so it's really really exciting mm. you know to be in the waiting market right now okay and how have you adopted the new technology now to obviously increase your production value as far as wedding films are concerned by buying more toys <laughs> buying more toys yeah <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely always in the lookout for, you know, things out there that can make our production a lot easier, you know, a lot uh, better in every way. And I hear paper cranes, uh, you know, you guys are quite uh, different. And what sets you guys apart from, let's say, the other wedding uh, production houses out there, do you think? Uh, when it comes to a uh, point of difference, I like to say probably two things. Uh, one is being um, our style. I believe that our style is pretty unique mm -hmm. in terms of how when people watch our films, the experience that they get, while watching and then after watching it is what I call different. Mm. And also the values that we carry, we always trying to uh, make our films to always portray the meaning of marriage in the wedding films because mm. a lot of people, they tend to forget that, you know, wedding is all about the marriage. Mm. So we try to always put the values of marriage and how we always say to our couples, you know, hopefully going to marriage is not always easy. Mm. When you look back and you uh, see uh, your wedding film, it might remind you of how you guys started. So that's how, you know, we, the purpose of what we do things is like that. Mm, okay, so tell me how you would, let's say for example, pitch a treatment to, to a client. What I would call it is more like a, a brief, right? So normally when a client comes in, you know, and we're just having a chat about uh, their wedding day, and then I always say, you know, on the wedding, don't worry about uh, how we would capture it and, and stuff like that. Just worry about enjoying your day mm. because that's what's most important. Mm. We will be there to capture whatever you're experiencing, not, not to be there to tell you what to do. Mm. So that's pretty much it. Okay. People have coined the phrase cinematic wedding films. Yeah. Talk us through a bit about you know, how you make a wedding film cinematic. Is it the techniques that you use? Is it the equipment that you use? Or is it the look that you create to, def to coin or define it as cinematic? A lot of people would think that cinematic is all about uh, using some different type of cameras, mm -hmm. some sort of lenses and using a slider or a glide cam or whatever it is to create that, that filmic look. But to us, a cinematic wedding film is something that portrays a story, just how you would watch a film. When you watch a film, there is the introduction to the movie, character building, uh, story development, and how the film reached the climax and how it ends. That's how we portray a cinematic wedding film, how it carries you through a story and it ends with something that you would remember. Mm -hmm. Not just watching a one touch of what the day looks like and with a nice music. That's not what I call cinematic. Okay. Tell me a bit about your game plan. So for example, you know, pre-production, production and post-production. So for example, you're about to shoot a wedding on a weekend. What are the plans that you put in place? All right. Two weeks before the wedding, we usually meet with a couple and we just chat about uh, the wedding, you know, the usual schedule in the, from the morning, the ceremony and the, the reception. But then the part that we spend our time the most is basically asking uh, what are the special things that will happen on the day? What are the things that you deem most important for you on the wedding day? Because that will be the things that we want to focus the most because we want to create a wedding film that is important for them. Something that they want to remember, something they, they want to see over and over again. So after we get all of those details, then we put them into a piece of paper, we spread it out to all the crew. Not all of our crew will meet with the clients, only usually the lead shooter. And then everybody will understand, okay, well, let's focus on these things, you know, and then, and then we'll go from there. We don't really have like a set storyboard, if you may call it. We don't have those things because we want to keep everything fresh. We want Spontaneous. To keep it, yeah. yeah. We, don't want, we don't want to be the people who direct how the film will be like. Mm. We want to keep it open so that when we capture it, it we really capture the, the essence of whatever happened. And then post-production will be directed by whatever we captured on mm. the day. So how much of the technical side of shooting and making something look good 
uh, combined with uh, then again giving the client what they want. Yeah. So how much do you think about the cameras you use, the lights you use, the time of day, uh, the lenses you use or the, uh, the equipment you use? When we shoot weddings, we are, we are working with fast-paced environment where there's no redo, so there's no retakes. Of course we can if we ask them to do it again, but that's not what we want them to do. We want to capture whatever happens as they happen. So our gear is very much designed in a way that light, portable, and efficient. So we don't carry uh, big gears like you would carry on a film shoot. We will carry smaller gears, but they're all very uh, effectively planned to serve different purposes. Like we will carry, for example, 10 lenses, but we would carry three lenses on the uh, preparation stage, uh, bridal preparation, groom preparation, and then we would carry another six lenses for the ceremony, but leave the other three lenses. So everything is very much pre-planned depending on the purpose of the event. Mm. Okay, and so, so I guess the margin for error is also very, you know, very small. You yeah, can't... I think the, the, the worst possible thing that could go wrong is when you miss an important part. Yeah. For example, the wedding kiss, mm. right? And that's when we have contingency plans that we put in place. For example, multiple shooters, mm. right? Multiple cameras and stuff like that. So we make sure on the important parts, we have some sort of backup running at all time. Mm. On other parts of the day where it's less important that we allow more risk to be put in place because we cannot be too safe all the time that we don't allow flexibility in terms of uh, getting more creative with our shots. If we focus on putting too many cameras on one thing and then we miss out on a lot of other creative possibilities that we can get. Mm -hmm. okay. So in terms of um, criteria, you know, uh, we talk about induction in terms of how you select you know, shooters that join Paper Cranes. You know, what are those procedures? Talk about what are the things you're looking for? I mean, anyone can point and shoot a camera, yeah. right? But what are the qualities that you look for? Uh, I guess I would like to try to talk about three things. Uh, number one is they have to enjoy the wedding environment. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't love the wedding environment because everybody's happy when they go to a wedding. Uh, number two, that person has to be a people person because on a wedding day, um, you don't really just work on yourself. You work with a lot of other people, like the photographers, the makeup artists, uh, um, the celebrant, uh, the priest, whatever, whoever it is. You have to become a team person, not only for your own team, but also for every other fan as a whole. Uh, thirdly, you have to be that person who doesn't o only operate a camera, but you also tell a story with whatever you're shooting right then and there. You don't, you don't have time to build storyboarding uh, like on a piece of paper. You don't have time to ask someone to, do, to direct them to do something that you would like them to do. You cannot do that. You have to do the storyboard as you shoot. Uh, say the groom is putting his jacket on, you kind of have to paint the storyboard in your head how are you going to shoot him as he's putting in the jacket and then he's fixing it? Which, which shots would you take? Which lens would you use? Uh, which background would you use? How, how is the lighting at, at that time? Is it window light? Is it, is it mixed light? How is your Kelvin going? And all of those decisions you have to make right then and there. Mm. And that's, that's probably the most crucial thing a uh, wedding uh, filmmaker has to face okay. like every single day. And that leads me to my next question. A big part of, of shooting weddings is audio acquisition, mm. right? That's a very important part yeah. for you guys. And um, I understand, again, if it's run and gun, you have celebrants, you've got brides, you've got grooms, you've got you know, relatives, parents speaking. How do you cope with that? Now, you know, from your perspective, how important is audio to you? Very, very important. Audio is very important in our productions. And it's, like you said, it's very, very challenging when we deal with environment that is uncertain and changing all the time. For example, I might walk into a bright preparation and then they are blasting uh, Justin Bieber on their laptop. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, like the neighbor is, has their dog barking and stuff like that. So the, the idea is to come in and assess your environment and try to decide, try to pick up things that you can have control to eliminate. For example, the Justin Bieber on the laptop, I can ask them, hey, do you want to turn it down or turn it off or whatsoever, you know, mm -hmm. and ask them nicely. Um, and like with some other things like TV, I can just ask them to turn it off. But on certain things like crowd noise, for example, there's something that I have to take into account in my head. Okay, there's a big crowd noise, so my, my, my sound won't be as clean. So I have to plan uh, things that I want to do around those, those things. And with important audio such as celebrant sounds or uh, speeches or rat and groom reading letters to each other and stuff like that, that's when we, we know that those things are going to happen. So we can plan beforehand, right? So we would normally like, you know, plug into the celebrant's microphone, 
uh, put level disc mic on them and stuff like that, arrange our audio beforehand so everything is perfectly clear. Uh, with, when, when the bride and groom is um, reading their um, letters, we know it's going to happen. So normally with the groom, we would put the lavalier mics first before he reads. But with the bride, usually it's a bit challenging because they wear you know, a white guard, I don't want to mess around with it. So normally we would do the obvious things, for example, closing the door of the room so that no outside noise will come in, like minimize the noise ratio and have uh, like warn the, the people inside the room, for example, the bridesmaids, hey, keep it quiet when she's reading and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then basically go, going as close as possible with my uh, video mic to the bride, but not too close at the same time. Mm -hmm. Running a, a successful business too is, is few and far between. So, you know, what are the things that you can do to basically establish a, a very successful business? Uh, how we can get into where we are right now, I think we put a lot of effort into establishing our style. We make sure that when people watch our work, even if they don't know which company that produced this film, within 30 seconds, we want them to already kind of like have the feeling, oh, I think this is Pepper Crane's film, because we want our style to be very strong. When people watch it, they know, oh, I think this is Pepper Crane's style. Yeah. And that's what sets us apart. Other than that, I think our brand, we put a lot of effort into our brand because we want people to, to understand not only our work, but also our characters and the things that we believe in. So our mm -hmm. brand, is very important into the success of our business. Right now. I mean, obviously thinking outside the box, so branding is important, your image is important. Uh, I guess what I was trying to get at was, uh, you know, some of the little things like we don't often think about, like logistics or, mm. you know, internal infrastructure of the, the small business. Uh, do you have any tips for people that want to set up a very successful production company? Uh, having a really, really good team is, is, is crucial uh, in, in any business and this, it's the same with our business. We have a really, really strong team where everybody understands uh, what is the values, what is the purpose of having Pepper Cranes to exist in, in, in this world, basically. So everybody works together and they represent Pepper Cranes in the way Pepper Cranes is. So I guess that's one thing that I would recommend people to start looking for people that share the same values, share the same belief and share the same, uh, same sort of vision? mindset. The yeah. same vision. Yeah. 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 Uh, secondly is to have a really, really clear goal of what you want to do because a lot of people, they like to uh, grow organically and growing organically is, is, is fine, is, is, is great but what would be even better if you know exactly where you want to go so that you can have a really clear direction where you want to be on a certain time, time frame. Like what they say, you know, a director of the company is someone that gives direction of where the company goes. So if the director doesn't really know where the company is heading to then he's not really doing a good job. Mm, great. You guys are planning a series of workshops I believe? Yes, we yeah. are currently planning for our Antwerp workshop that is going to be held in Bali this year. Wow. So stay tuned for the release date. And w w what are the components in the workshop itself? Tell us a bit about, you know, just a brief in terms of what you would cover in the workshop. A lot of things. We're going to cover uh, things like creative shooting. Uh, we believe that uh, when we come, up, come into like an, an event shooting when everything is just randomly happening, there is still a lot of things that you can apply to make your shots creative, not just the same all the time. Those are one of the aspects that we want to teach. Other than that, storytelling is a big aspect. We want to show how we get inspiration from our storytelling skills, uh, as well as just finding your own style, because we believe it's important that everybody knows what kind of things that they like, and that will become their style. Okay. Who do you think will benefit most from these workshops that you're about to conduct? I think. Every event uh, filmmakers can benefit from our workshop. Uh, I did join a workshop a long time ago on the, my early days and that one workshop really changed my whole life. The way I see things, the way I do things and the why I do certain things in my work. So I believe uh, workshops are very important for everyone. So I believe, you know, if you, you watch our work and you see uh, our, and you like our style and you want to know why we do certain things, I think this is a workshop for you. Okay, good. So it's not just for cinematic wedding films, it can be for anything else as well, right? So it will cover, the workshop will cover various events, correct? Uh, our skills in storytelling can be applied in any event storytelling because wedding is an event as yes. well as a corporate event is an event as well, something that you cannot really direct, something you have to just do things on the spot spontaneously. So there are the things that we have learned, the things that we apply on our work can definitely help you on those kind of events as well. Okay. It would be safe to assume that audio is going to be a big part of it as well. Right? Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. All right, Santa, thank you very much for uh, coming you. into Road HQ. I hope you enjoyed the tour. and uh, Very much so. Lovely to have you. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thank you.